Привет. Greetings, friends. Today, we may say, is our first session of our upcoming three series webinar. It's a set of video meetings which we'll be having together. We're not going to jump immediately into this practice and to start doing something. In today's meeting, it's very important for us to understand what are we dealing with and why are we here. Why do we even want to do interpersonal work if we are so used to, during the course of our lives, blaming our external reality for everything that happens to us? It is important to understand and figure out how in our society the accepted norm to think is that there is an external reason, a problem, which causes a consequence of my inner worry. Then if we're going to live our lives based on this commonly accepted form of reality, if this is going to be our axiom that external problems penetrate inside of ourselves, then we are not going to be able to do any inner work. So inner work is only possible if we change the reason and consequences around and the reason is my inner sick head with which I want to work with and change those neural networks which have been formed during my early childhood years. They have formed a deep groove of autopilot mode which thereafter, due to their chemical reactions, often autopilot mode, create my certain destructive set of actions. What I mean is not the external reality or somebody's actions that's causing my misery and problems, but completely the opposite. My inner state creates the resulting problems in my external reality. My own problems, the problems in other people's lives, in the surrounding environment, etc. It's important to understand that the reason is the basis of our work. Reason and consequence. It is important for us to change these two around. Previously we thought that the reason is something external, outside of us. And the consequence is something that happens inside of us. In reality, it is important to understand that it actually works completely opposite. Firstly, something inside of us creates that consequence which happens in our outer reality. If we are still resisting this realization and we have no intent in even accepting that this might be truth, then this inner work is not possible and you should actually just drop out of this webinar right away. If you still feel that the outer reality is messing you up and causing your suffering, then we cannot go anywhere with this training. Yeah, we cannot carry on moving forward. Um, without this realization, this is going to turn into some cheap psychological game, which is very fashionable in the New Age movement, New Age spiritual movement to proclaim as uh, truth. It will be like in um, traditional psychology that I have um, placed myself into the suit and uh, place myself into certain um, borders of our societal norms um, which makes me fit in with uh, everything else and my inner reality then settles in and all is hunky-dory. This is what the traditional psychology is doing. It tells us to make ourselves fit in into the certain um, borders of social norms then you're going to start feeling much, much better. And the New Age movement tells us that we are going to dress in white clothes and rise above all of this and just look at the whole thing from right above the bird's eye view. We keep on stubbornly repeating that this does not relate to us at all. Yes, we are part of society, but it's all in the past. It's not what's painting inside of us which is the same pain that overwhelms our entire society. It's either something that's linked with various forms of escape from our inner state or various forms of molding ourselves into new social frameworks. Then in both cases, it will be just a continuation of various forms of escapism. Escape and nothing else run from the inner pain that's happening within me, 
always run and never actually take the time to stop and see what is actually happening within me. No, no, it's not with me, it's with external reality and that is why I'm feeling so bad. No, no, it's me feeling horrible which is causing my external reality to worsen and make myself feel even more horrible. This is the starting point and it's the basics, 101. We cannot even look at the law of polarity and all of its mechanics from which actually occurs our entire internal conflict which we experience on a daily basis, which creates continuous inner swinging on the scales of oppositions and inner conflict. The polarity in itself is a difficult concept to understand and we will be spending much time on this important subject during our upcoming masterclass. We need to figure out how we continuously look for the antipod opposition towards something we believe in, with which we have a continuous war on. We transform it into a battle with the external and again and again we do not understand how we create inner anxiety, our unsettling feeling and inner discomfort and at the end of the day our great depression. So I'm just going to repeat myself. First, we realize that the reason is actually within us and therefore the consequences ricochet on all of our external relationships. The reason is the feeling, the feelings which I generate from my programs. The feeling of deep discomfort and permanent fear. Therefore, my feelings birth my actions, very certain actions which are the consequences and the result of my inner state. And these actions therefore then create various forms of external conflict. But the conflict is actually on the inside of us. It's duality, part of polarity. So let's just summarize what I've been talking about. We are dealing with the most complex internal mechanisms which have, which have been stamped and imprinted into us and are working in autopilot mode. If we do not realize how the autopilot mode is working, we cannot do anything with our state or with our life. Therefore, the only thing we can do in this case is to slowly kill ourselves with neuroleptics, um, alcohol, um, drugs, uh, uh, weed and basically kill ourselves slowly. So it's the shortening of uh, our life step by step every way and bringing the death process much sooner. There is no other choice. However, if we do want to flourish, we've got to look inside of ourselves to understand what is really going on inside us. So before we start the inner transformative practical work and any inner transformation, you need to say goodbye to the illusion that it is going to be some quick fix, 15 minutes, pop culture and out you go the other end. Therefore, if we are still looking for some magical ways or want to transform our inner reality, I mean, internet is over pumped with numerous amounts of promises uh, claiming that you can transform yourself within minutes. Everything you have been forming your entire lives, all of this has been formed our entire lives and has created a myriad of neural networks and connections in our consciousness and within 15 minutes we can turn it around. Yes! So, if you're looking for some form of magic pills, unfortunately you came to the wrong place. Definitely not here. Here we're going to, in this work, we are going to take matter apart. First into cells and then the atoms and then we're going to look at every step of the way deeper and deeper to see how the processes and networks have been formed. So we're going to split it up into the tiniest of the tiniest of details. This is the type of work we have to do in order to look into our programming, which happens on autopilot mode, not in time and space, but really in the moment. So in order for us to freeze a moment and to unwrap it step by step to see how it was formed, it's not an easy work, but incredibly fascinating and interesting. It will turn around and come back with really 
awesome mindful state without any bull or exaggeration just deep graceful state it will unravel gently step by step let's go on this journey together and before we start to unpack the mechanisms from which forms our permanent suffering state which we carry throughout our lives feelings and emotions which accompany us every single day of our lives from morning until night time which are very much linked with fear and have been formed into an autopilot mode which we are not aware of how they actually work before we realize and understand how these autopilot modes work we need to figure out how they actually have been formed how they play like a stuck record over and over and over again inside of us is insignificant at this point in the beginning we need to understand how this has been formed within us in our childhood years especially early childhood development years and formed and imprinted into emotional clusters for now at least we need to make a surface level observation of our lives in order to understand this it doesn't matter in what country and what time has the person been born because at the end of the day the same programs are stirring up inside of all of us thinking that it is my personal pain which I drag throughout my entire life in reality it is our collective pain the programs are all the same so when we say that this individual is carrying his own burden it's an illusion it's not true when are we going to unpack the root of pain we're going to see that it's the same in everyone so if we just discuss it just on a surface level we need to understand that from the early childhood years everyone is formed in the system of appraisal and marks the parents on the other hand are not doing this on purpose in order to mess up their own child you're good you're bad in order to cause the pain no they're doing it unconsciously because they have been formed in the same system of coordination and uh, laws from the very early childhood years so therefore they don't understand the consequences of the appraisal structure system and therefore no evil is intended here at all but even without bad intent the transmission of this message over and over again towards future generation has happened unconsciously and in order to stop the transmission of this message the message of pain and fear over and over to our future generations we need to unpack unravel and unwrap this message of pain in order to understand what does it consist of and as i said earlier it consists of appraisal when a child gets born every action he or she takes their parents unconsciously appraise and judge them for everything they do what you have done here is good and what you have done here is bad when the mother says this is good what you have done um, any good action as a rule it is understandable and resonates with my own wish so if I say well done boy for cleaning up here I say this because it is comfortable for me um, it is profitable for my time to say that because I've just tidied up in the room 30 minutes ago and now it's gonna stay like that it so for me it is good and comfortable and profitable that the child is not gonna cause chaos in the room this is not a very good example but just for the simplicity's sake so why am I constantly giving a praise to my child this is good because it creates comfort for me and when the child takes out let's say a whole box of Lego out just so he can start his creative play process um, if I'm an unconscious mother I will say no 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 this is not good and without understanding what is standing behind this uh, negative put down on my child it was this simple pushing down and um, judging my son for taking out his toys I kill the creator the investigator and the researcher in him instantaneously because during my childhood years I was appraised for doing the right thing how mommy said to me the correct way 
And like this, it's not the right way. It's not right because I need to tidy up once again. Once again, this is a very primitive example, but what we need to understand that the child is step by step every way is slowly killed. The creator within him or her is completely destroyed because when he plays and does some creative process, he is always judged for doing that. And when he is sitting like a good little boy, not making any mess and uh, not moving left and right too much, then he is appraised, what a good little boy. And thus, which means that the child will not be punished and therefore he will be good. So if I'm a little child, I form a belief that inaction is good or doing what an adult tells me is always good and it's the right thing to do. And on the other hand, to do what I really love, what is interesting to me is bad and is punishable. So the system of coordination based on appraisal Wherever you go, whether it's in school, whether it's actions, whether it's circumstances, means this is good and this is bad. Appraisal is there for when we label on any circumstance and any action good and bad. A permanent imprinted stamp. This is how polarity formed. The dualism in our consciousness as opposition is formed from this system of coordinates. It's the most primitive layer. This is good and this is bad. If you are inactive, you are good. And if you do what you want, it's bad. So the system of coordinates of judgment, punishment and appraisal, praise. Now it is permanently stabilized. If I'm talking from the child's mind, it is permanently ingrained and imprinted into the child's consciousness. This happens so early in childhood's years and carries on the entire life. So to be able to see it from the outside and to realize what hell I have actually been formed in, that my feet and my arms are tied and I cannot be the curious, creative and inquiring me. From the side, I cannot see it because I have been formed inside of this. So to be able to see it from the side of how it will impact my life, and what terrible consequences it will have of recreating, boring, over and over and over life scenarios just in order to be agreeable so I can be appraised by others. And we know about appraisal, it is very, very relative. Um, relative to who? Relative to whoever it is profitable or comfortable for. From now on, I'm going to spend my entire life rushing towards some unreal peak just so I can get an appraisal from someone else. It's going to be easier to draw this. So here is an axis of coordinates where I am from now on is constantly swinging on the scales, completely doomed because I'm unconsciously, constantly judging myself, judging myself as bad or as good, without realizing that this whole thing is the same thing, it's one problem. They're the same things. So the more that I judge myself as bad, so although I'm an old adult now, um, in my head constantly I'm hearing a voice of my parent. This is bad, you're a bad person, I'll give you a bad mark. And this is good, you're great. And the more that I judge myself on the negative side, the more I want to prove to the world that I'm good, just to get an appraisal. The more that I'm worn out by the heavy weight of automatic self-judgment, of not being good enough, of being a bad person, the more I'm self-judging myself and self-judgment is guilt, I hate myself, I'm a nobody, I'm a piece of shit, I hate myself. On the other side, the need to try and get approval and appraisal from others because I'm good increases. I'm totally doomed to be torn, trying to figure out what type of nobody am I or who am I and what am I and 
this creates this unseen spiral throughout my whole life, which like a pendulum swings higher and higher into this internal conflict. And therefore, the more that I am claiming and affirming that I'm a genius, I'm good enough, I'm awesome, I'm great, I'm incredible, and the more horrible my situation actually becomes because all of this affirming is actually happening because I deeply hate myself because I'm feeling a huge feeling of guilt. So on this side, I'm completely convinced that I have no right to be on this planet. I'm a total pest. I just keep on hurting everybody and I do everything wrong. And because this is such a scary place to be, the subconscious is looking for saving maxims or um, proving that I have the right to exist. So to realize it as a problem where my entire life I've spent trying to figure out whether I have the right to exist or I don't have the right to exist. Am I even enough for this or that? Am I good or am I bad? Oh, therefore, I cannot even realize and figure this out within myself. And if I cannot figure this out within myself, then I cannot do anything with this situation. I will then keep on running from here to there on this worn out repeated trajectory somewhere there behind the horizon is some unfathomable great height from which one day i will sit upon and look down and feeling great above everyone else and now i can say all of my dreams come true and only then will i feel calm peaceful and relaxed but the trap is that I didn't acquire that calm, mindful state. In fact, I deeply hate myself. And this peak is the dualism conversation between myself and I. So I think that I'm over here and that is why I run over there. It's the trap of dualism, which is polarity. I'm a nobody and that is why I'm great. I hate myself and that is why I stream over there. It's not really the dialogue we have inside of our head. What I mean is... I'm not good enough, so I, I'm not enough, yeah, now I'm enough. So this dialogue inside of our heads, we're not necessarily speaking through and realize that I am enough because I think I'm not good enough. No, we're not ha really having this dialogue inside of our heads, but our entire lives are spent chasing, trying to figure this out within ourselves. This is clearly seen when the amplitude of duality is swinging higher and higher, resulting in split personality. This is already in itself a splitting of your personality. I am a jerk. A jerk is ничтожество in Russian. <laughs> And that is why I'm great. So I'm already entangled in the system of hierarchy. And therefore I need to end up there because I have a belief that I need to be great. So if I don't say to myself that I am great, I definitely think that I need to be great. When one's amplitude of polarity starts increasing higher and higher, there forms a sort of a shutter screen inside the subconsciousness. It is then medically diagnosed as splitting of personality, although we all have a split personality if we are in polarity and are torn by duality. It's nothing else than that. So if I'm having this internal dialogue that I'm a schmuck, no, I'm great, no, I'm a schmuck, no, I'm great, <laughs> no, I think I'm definitely a schmuck, no, I'm definitely great. When this dialogue eventually reaches the point where I don't even realize that I am the same person, then we are diagnosed as somebody that has a split personality. And uh, when a person has a split personality, he can often switch on the television and they hear the presenter talking to them in their name and surname and telling them that they're a great person and that the world needs them. You haven't yet realized how great you are, but time will come and you will still realize that the world is awaiting for you. You are incredibly important. Those entities over there that neither you or nobody else can see are waiting for you. You're the axis of the earth. This is pre-schizophrenia state. In schizophrenia, we have a third person who comes and saves us. Here, we're having a dialogue with ourselves. First, I'm this person and then I'm this person. Here, I'm a 
Schmack here is I'm great, but it's important to know that all of this dialogue happens from I am personal. In schizophrenia, here is I am and here is a third person which I have imagined and created. So this is how these mechanisms work. Therefore, it is super destructive for a human being to be raised on a system of appraisal. We are a cosmos born into a human body. It is impossible for us to carry over this ugly and deformed baggage of a warped out paradigm without it having tremendously dramatic and destructive consequences on our entire life. A human being does not even realize that when he is praised and told that he is some great human being, it's just as equally um, degrading as, if you would say, you're a horrible schmuck. You see, he or she do not realize that it is equally just as degrading as if you would say, you're horrible, you're not good enough, you haven't done this correctly, do this right. So he thinks that when he gets an appraisal, he feels uh, a relaxation and feels much better. But in reality, the suffering just increases. At the deeper level, he realizes that it is just as equally degrading because he's not some dog that somebody can just give some crumbs off the table and say, oh, now you're a good, well-trained puppy. Well done, boy. Thus said, a human being who has been raised on the system of coordinates based on appraisal is always suffering. No matter whether his mark is minus one or plus one. It doesn't matter what mark it is. The human being is racing towards constantly being appraised and positively judged without actually realizing that in itself it is bringing the ever-growing pain within this deformed and ugly paradigm. So the question does not stand whether I can adapt within this messed up paradigm and live like everything is hunky-dory when I end up at the high place here. No, this is not the case. Even if I end up right on top of the world, I will still hate everybody else because I will use them to affirm myself. Therefore, we are within a hierarchical system. Whether we put it like this or whether we put it like this, it doesn't matter. We are still split in the duality of the hierarchy. Thus, we will keep on suffering within the duality for as long as we are living within a hierarchical polarity duality paradigm. No matter how this is called, there are so many words, but in reality, it's all so simple. It's really very simple. It's the system of appraisal. An appraised human being can never be truly happy. And to say this to ourselves is extremely scary. Let's try and think, why is there so much resistance and aggression towards this information? In my trainings, people have cried, they have laughed, they have screamed, they have even run away because they realize that they're living within the system. So then what can I do with this? Everything is locked within this. Everything is based on hierarchy and polarity. Everything is based on opposition and the kick we get when we suppress the others. So I'm either the suppressed one at the bottom hating everybody else above me or I'm the one on top hating everybody below me because I am just affirming myself by standing on their heads. And when we realize that this is a collective disease and to try to work with the external factors to try and figure this out, it's completely impossible. Therefore, if the sick in the head me is going to try and create an eco-settlement or an eco-village or some new paradigm without realizing that I'm living within the sick paradigm, I will just recreate the same broken system. And if I say that this is going to be the new system, it is still a system. And all systems are based on good and bad duality of polarity. It's basically, I'm going to become like another educator telling people what's the right thing and what's the wrong thing. And it's the same system that I will carry over to my own children once again. I will force my children to suffer from appraisal and praise. I will thus turn my children to be the slaves of this movement, the fear to be humiliated, 
and the race towards someone that is so great at the top of the world, someone that society deeply admires and looks up to. And this nightmare will never end. It will only end when we start to integrate this. And the only thing that will work here is a deep inner process of alternation where in your consciousness you jump from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, very quickly. After doing this practice for a while, you will start to slowly realize that polarity is not one or the other. It's one and the other at the same time is the very same thing. Creating this eroded valley of pain within ourselves is like two sides of the river which is absolutely rotting inside of us creating this horrible passing stench ripping a tear within our chest area we always say that my heart is paining but it's actually what we mean is this area because we're being torn by the dualism of polarity and and permanent competitive mode we live in this war firstly happens within ourselves and then with the rest of the world I will see you in a week's time. Thank you.